Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop for another episode of Turning Tips, Tricks, and Jigs. Uh, first thing I want to start off with is... Okay, this is a handy little trick. If you've got some odd piece that has a little imperfection that you want to sort of blend it in and make it look a little bit like a bark inclusion, you can just burn it with a little small butane torch similar to this one, uh, orange one here. And you can see where I burned this little area here where I had a little uh, chip fly out. Uh, these are not real expensive and like I say they use uh, butane uh, canisters to refuel them similar to a, to a lighter. So. so we're going to just concentrate on burning this little area in here and then we're going to come back and burn this little area here at the bottom. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all have a a live center like this one way or the one that comes with a power mag that has a removable tip. It comes with this uh, this bar and I've been told that the weight on this bar that if you tap it this thing will pop out but I found that sometimes if you haven't taken it out in a while it, it oxidizes, rusts something. It's a challenge. What I found was when I did a, a little plumbing repair job in the house and replaced one uh, faucet system with another, the rod that lifts the uh, drain stopper is made out of brass and it winds up being a perfect fit, perfect hammer and I can take this thing and take a uh, my mallet, I have to catch it someplace, and tap it. You can see that was a, <laughs> with it, if I, you tap on this you just bend it, bend it uh, all, all the hell and back. So that's one little uh, trick. Uh, another one I showed this mallet once before. This is a new and improved mallet. When I made this one, I drilled this uh, a one inch hole, drilled it oh, know, maybe two inches deep, and then I put a, I filled it with probably, I don't remember exactly how much, but eight inches of lead shot, and then I plugged it with a piece of Osage Orange, and as a result, I have a dead blow mallet. It gives it, uh, it just makes it a lot handier as a dead blow mallet. Uh, my Supernova 2 chuck, sometimes it gets a little stiff to pull off my chuck and a little, uh, uh, little item I've come up with is I just took a, a piece of steel rod that fits inside a hole where you put a grub screw to, to uh, fasten this thing onto your spindle so it won't unthread and I find that if I put that in there and hold the lock nut down it'll just pop right out and that works real well for me. Another little tip is with the uh, Cone Live Center um, sometimes, you know, the cone, if you put this into a block of wood, uh, it works great if there's a large hole you're stabilizing it with. Sometimes if you put it in a, in a hole like this, it acts as a big wedge, and on smaller pieces it'll have a tendency to crack it. One way you can solve that is take you a small washer. I don't know if y'all can see that. And it'll limit the depth of that. And that winds up being a, a, a nice little little trick. I don't, know if, I don't think I've shown this before. This is a slick and lock, a lock nut wrench. It's very inexpensive. It's cheap. It's not, not high quality. So I didn't pay much money for it. But it came with a wing nut. And I, I use this. This is great for removing uh, uh, chucks, uh, spindles, any variety of different things because you can adjust it. The problem was that wing nut was very difficult to tighten and untighten. I just replaced it with a one quarter by twenty uh, plastic uh, knob uh, that you get at wood wood turning uh, uh, store that you use for jigs and, and fixtures. So that helps. While I was at it, I put the same type of knob, a little larger one, on my uh, Vera grind jig instead of that wing nut because that makes it a lot easier to adjust. Now I generally don't move this much, and I've actually got a hole drilled where I can sight through it to line up to make sure it's at the right right place. Uh, but if you do uh, adjust it a lot, trust me, plastic knob sure makes it a lot easier. Okay, a little, a couple little sharpening uh, uh, jigs that I've come up with. I took a threaded glue block and glued onto a piece of uh, three-quarter inch MDF, turned it around, dropping my honing compound on the ground here. Let's pick that up. Now I have two pieces of compound. Uh, but with this honing compound, you can put a little of this on here, and this thing works great for really honing uh, uh, chisels, uh, bench chisels, uh, your woodworking chisels, uh, and it also works well for your skew. Now what I do is I reverse, I 
reverse my uh, uh, lathe, turn the speed down. Uh, so I have it going coming away from me, and I can use this like in, in this manner to uh, to hone and really get a get a nice sharp edge. A similar trick is you make one a little bit larger. Uh, I believe it's about nine inches, so I could glue a piece of uh, uh, plywood, plywood, piece of sandpaper on there, on this threaded glue block, and now I have a sanding jig, and this thing works works great. Now this one it's a little bit out of out of true. Uh, you probably want to make sure you surface this. Uh, with a scraper or a skew to try to get it perfectly flat. But if you're demoing or traveling or someplace like that, you can also use this in emergency to uh, sharpen your tools using your tool wrist to uh, to support them uh, to freehand sharpen um, if you if you get in a pinch. Okay, here's a handy little little trick. If when if you need a drum sander, uh, just simply turn your lathe into one by turning a cylinder approximately three and a half inches. Uh, to suit yourself uh, in diameter, wrap it very carefully with a piece of uh, thin sandpaper, uh, staple it on each end, and then it, this works out great for sanding things such as uh, uh, spatulas and, and other items that would be suitable for a, a drum sander. So give it a shot. Try. Okay, if you're making a lot of small stuff, uh, ornaments, um, game calls, um, bottle stoppers, this is what I'd call a poor man's buffer. You either make a Morse taper with an inch and a half plug on the end of it, or you do like I did, use a threaded block, glue on uh, a piece of scrap. Uh, turn it down to an inch and a half where it'll just snugly fit in a uh, paint paint uh, roller. You can use synthetic or you could use uh, lamb's wool. Uh, bring up a cone, just snug it up slightly, not a whole lot, and there you go. And you can actually use three compounds on the same same piece. You could use uh, triple E here, white diamond here, and wax here. If you're like me and you keep little bits of sandpaper around, I, I find myself knocking them down. Sometimes it helps if I put them in this little uh, magnetic uh, brush holder that I picked up at, uh, at, at the paint department of, at my home improvement store. It's got a magnet on it so it'll, it, you can fasten it anywhere and it'll hold those pieces of uh, uh, sandpaper. Uh, and then of course you can always use it for painting to hold your paintbrush and it's got a little thing here where you can open up the paint lid. So that's a handy little, uh, a little, little trick. Okay, another little trick. Now that it's summertime and I start moving into my summer uniform of shorts, I have a tendency to, for the shavings to just fill up around here and just make a, make a mess. And I've got my wife to make me some gaiters. Uh, looks about a little bit like a baby bib. Matter of fact, if you've got an old baby bibs, you can use those. So put a little hook and loop or a little Velcro on it, and you can put those things. I know they look kind of stupid, but but they really do keep the shavings from getting down in my shoes. So uh, that's a handy little 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 trick for the summertime. I built this storage unit uh, box to go underneath my lathe for heavy things, uh, long things that are hard to store, such as uh, texturing tools and maybe some hauling tools. I don't use it for ballast, but uh, I had some granite uh, countertops put in my kitchen and. They, there was a big, large cutout from from where the range, uh, the eyes on the, uh, for heating pots and pans, uh, they was they was uh, they cut out, and it's I had them just slice it to fit this thing, and it's about adds about 70 pounds, doesn't take up a lot of room, and that's that adds some handy ballast at, at no effort. Okay, I'm going to put. Uh a felt pad on the bottom of each of these so it doesn't scratch up my table, uh, dining room table. Uh, if you hadn't seen me do this in the episode on my uh, making chess men, I want to show you an easy way to cut that. Basically I just fold the pad in half, it's big enough, with a square, and I'm going to place it up flat against this block in the appropriate size. Bring up a little tension, and this thing's going to flop around a little bit. I'm going to bring this out. 
Uh, a skew works well, but actually what I found out works best is, uh, is a spindle gouge because it seems to cut the felt uh, shraps a little bit better. So we get that thing going at a pretty good speed and we're just going to come in here. And there we have two perfectly round pads to glue on the bottom of our candlesticks. Okay, here's my handy dandy uh, anchor seal bottle. I think this is a big uh, plastic peanut butter jar or something. But I made this, this lid with a recess in it that would fit the plastic lid. And I fastened this brush on it. Because this stuff never really dries, it goes back in there and stays soft. You know, this works pretty well to treat my temporarily treat wood or permanently treat spindle stock like this where I coat both ends with this anchor seal. It just makes it real handy just to be able to open up the bottle and and dab that on there. And you got to try to get a little bit around the edges too. Okay, here's a little trick I use for my little cut off pieces of t-shirt. I just put them in a milk jug with a little hole in the bottom so I can just pull those uh, strips out. Got it hanging on a convenient rack. Uh, while we're talking about that, uh, I use an awful lot of antique oil and it's got boil linseed oil which can lend to spontaneous combustion and shop fire so you got to be disposed of those uh, finishing rags very very carefully. So what I do is I simply hang the rag on the corner here, they're not very big until uh, the next day when they're dry uh, I can throw it out and then I take the, the rag I've just finished using, put it up there and give it a day to, to dry out. Uh, air hammer from Home Depot costs less than fourteen dollars with four chisels. So let's see what it's uh, what it's about. These things, as I understand it, I know nothing about this stuff. Is designed primarily to cut metal or to bust through uh, concrete, uh, cut cut rivets, any number of uh, things. Uh, here's what the box looks like. Um, Got a one-year warranty. Costs 14 bucks uh, off their uh, uh, internet sales. Pick it up at the store. No sh no shipping uh, charges. Four and a half cubic feet per minute uh, air requirements at 90 psi. Now the reason I got this. This is a tip from uh, Lyle Jameson on trimming bark. Uh, so that's why I bought this. So. Let's turn on the compressor. Plug this thing in and see what happens. Okay, my air compressor just cut off. So let's give it a shot. Let's say I was knocking off a piece of bark where I was going to put the uh, uh, the live center. Let's see how this how well it's done. Okay, here's a little small compressor I've got. It's a little rollerboard husky. Uh, it'll do. I believe it's. Uh, Matter of fact, there's the specs at the bottom. Let me show you. Two cubic feet at 130, 35 psi, uh, 1.75 gallons. So it's a pretty small, uh, lightweight. But uh, as you can see from knocking the bark off, I think it'll do the do the job if you're only doing a, a stick of uh, one or two pieces at a, at a time and may recycle a little bit but I think it's going to be a handy tool for knocking the bark off of wood that I bring in my shop so it it doesn't keep critters stored inside.